What's been bugging you? This gun in my hand. Drugs. Drugs! Someone must... Someone must have drugged me. Easy, Falk. What is this? What's going on? You're going to be all right. None of this makes sense. Trees as big around as redwoods, except the trunks are smooth and bright green. And there's a yellow flower at the top the size of a house. Giant dandelions. Blades of grass taller than skyscrapers. Everything smells wrong. How does it smell? Earthy, but way more earthy than the outdoors ever smelled before. Because you've never had your nose this close to the dirt before. I guess if I'm an eighth inch tall, I'm pretty close to the dirt. I don't know if you're an eighth inch tall. We use the metric system. Of course. Everything's all right. Calm down. My name is Henry. Yes, why am I overreacting? I can be sure that nothing's wrong because a ladybug the size of a pony is telling me everything's all right. I'm not the size of a pony. You're the size of a large aphid. In fact, I thought one of the aphids from our herd had strayed from the rosebush. I was coming to coax you back to our grazing area. I had no idea a ladybug's eyes looked like- Reach inside your coat pocket. Your friend Cagliostro wrote a note. Cagliostro? Castro? Something like that. Dear Falk, sorry if you're feeling disoriented. The shrink ray may cause short-term memory loss, or it could be an effect of the serum I've given you that allows you to speak to beetles telepathically. Yeah, see? My lips aren't moving. Do you even have lips? My facial features aren't moving in time with the words you're hearing. We're communicating through our minds. No. Even if Castro could make a shrink ray without screwing it up, why would he make something to communicate with beetles? Is that the strangest thing this guy ever came up with? I suppose not. No, this is a dream or something. If he made a shrink ray, why would he use it on me? Keep reading. While testing the shrink ray, I accidentally shrank the keys to the sapphire Studebaker, and a red ant seems to have carried them away. I need you to retrieve the keys before the Emerald Ash Borer returns and finds the angry resignation letter I left in the glove box for him. Cheers, Castro. We were tracking the Red Ant in that direction, and don't worry about all the dangers lurking in the lawn jungle. You're under the protection of the Ladybug Republic. This is crazy. There has to be some other explanation. It's springtime here, flowers blooming, warm enough to walk around without a heavy coat. Last thing I remember it was the first week of February. The short-term memory loss caused by the shrink ray or serum might have blacked out a few days or a few months. You've already read and forgotten and reread that note from Castro three times so far. Drugs. Or someone clouded my mind. If I ever get back to my right mind, I'll give Lamont an earful. Can we please focus on finding that ant? Where are we? I can see we're outdoors, but where in the city? We're in a field next to Central Junior High, near the corner of Del Vecchio and Telegraph Road. How does a ladybug know the names of streets and buildings? Just because you're ignorant about us doesn't mean we're ignorant about you. Now if we can reach that ant before it gets to its colony, I think the two of us can handle it. Maybe I was dosed with some hallucinogenic gas or powder in Castro's lab. Or I hit my head. Or I'm losing my mind. A shrink ray is not that hard to believe. You've seen visions of hell, enemies with superpowers, you met a version of yourself from a parallel dimension and you traveled there for a minute. See, this is the kind of thing that's hard to believe. How would a ladybug know all this? Because we listen to your show. Humans turn up those radios so it's almost impossible for us to avoid hearing it. Really? You guys are fans? It's not like I can change the station. I guess if I was a fan of one specific radio show, I could walk or fly all day to find a radio tuned to that one. I'm enough of a fan of your show not to leave when the only radio available is playing this gun in my hand. I have no idea what ant tracks look like. It's okay. I can smell the pheromones. She went this way. Hey, you can fly, right? Would you be able to lift me up and just fly to catch up with her? Or you could fly there by yourself, fight the ant, take back the keys... Don't push your luck. Anyway, the Ladybug Republic coexists peacefully with the ants and most other arthropods. The ones that aren't trying to eat us. Humans could learn a lot from ladybugs. How to enjoy life, eating a natural balanced diet, how to organize society to avoid hierarchy and inequality. Maybe we're just built differently. I don't believe that. It might take a lot of work, but one day you could achieve the amazing heights that ladybugs have reached. The sooner I find these stupid keys, the sooner I get back to normal. Wait, why does Castro need keys to get into the Sapphire Studebaker? One of the futuristic features of that car is supposed to be a push-button ignition. It doesn't need a key. Does it still need a key to unlock the door? Probably. I swear, everything those guys do, it's two steps forward, one step back. 
I mean, not to gossip, but his boss has obviously never met or talked with an actual Emerald Ash Borer. You wouldn't name yourself after them if you got to know- What's that round thing up ahead? It looks like a maroon gas bag for a small zeppelin. Some kind of airship. That's no airship. That's a moon. What? I mean, it's the abdomen of the red ant we've been following. The rounded tail end of it. And now she's turning towards us. I think I like the tail end better. This gun in my hand is brought to you by the Ladybug Republic Convention and Visitors Bureau. Are you a young human female who needs time off from protecting all the colors of the rainbow from murky gray enemies? Or perhaps you're a horse or bear, part of a colorful horde of cheerful critters, each of whom has an emblem permanently marked on its belly or flank, representing its personality or unique abilities? Being around such a tight-knit clan is great when you need a friend, but sometimes they can get on your nerves. Or just maybe, you're one of a group of children who smells like fruit or baked goods. Howdy, my name's Strawbonnet Sheetrock. And I am Huckleberry Flan. We are here to tell you what a wonderful place the Ladybug Republic is to vacation at. Put all your troubles behind you. Kick your feet up. You might even find some apple cider that's been in the back of the fridge too long and turned to hooch. That is right. Somehow every mini-fridge in the Ladybug Republic is stocked with cider that has just begun to turn as well as potato juice and extracts from the blue agave plant that have been accidentally fermented and distilled. It is a marvelous land. The sunrise is glorious and lasts seven hours, followed by an incredible sunset that lasts seven more hours, guaranteed to shine every color of the rainbow, from Roy to G to Biv. Fruit trees galore! Warm beaches, but not too warm. Insect staff to cater to your every whim. Foot massages! The music is mostly recorders and ocarinas, but it grows on you. And they don't get hung up on things like ladies that work in construction, or berry boys like Huck who always smell like custard. Did we mention the rides? Here you can ride on unicorns, ride on winged horses, ride on rainbows, with no fear of being chased by dragons or gray aliens or other colorless enemies. Those folks are explicitly blocked from entry into the Ladybug Republic, thanks to recent changes in the Supreme Court. No one with a sour disposition or grumpy demeanor is admitted either. So if you have one of those happy communities where your names are like Happy and Jokey and Brainy and Grouchy and one of them is kind of a jerk, he will have to be left behind. Sorry, and yet I am not so sorry. It's girly, alright? I ain't one to mince words. It's a girly place. I mean, if there's such a thing as the Lisa Frank seal of approval, Ladybug Republic got it. But you don't have to be a girl to enjoy it. I wasn't sure it would rub me the right way, but I took a shine to it once I tried it. Plus, if you like girly girls, this place is full of them. Maybe we should avoid discussions of romance. Most visitors here are like eight years old. Nah, they're just cartoony looking. But they know they're up from down, if you know what I mean. I am sure I do not know what you mean. Security is a priority here in Ladybug Republic. A staff of gnats circles overhead, not too close to be annoying to you, but able to survey activities across the land and report any visitors who turn sour or intimidating or randy. Well, anyhow, you should shrink up and come on down sometime. It's a hoot. You'll see smiles on everyone, and you'll be smiling too when you visit the Ladybug Republic. Some restrictions apply. Humans of all colors are welcome. Only imaginary creatures are restricted based on their attitudes or markings. Ladybug Republic is not responsible for discrepancies with shrinking or re-enlargement of your body or luggage, as those services are provided by third-party contractors. See your travel agent for details. Trying to manhandle this thing is getting me nowhere. It's like rustling a tree limb. Henry, I need something. What do you need? This gun in my hand. Now let's see if your exoskeleton can deflect bullets. Blast. My gun must have been affected by that stupid shrink ray. Wait, the ant's sound is familiar. I think I can understand it. It's saying, Come closer. What is it? I'm not an it. I'm a she. And if you misgender me again, it'll be your last time. Ow. Sorry, she. You're a she. Can you give me the keys and your mandibles? I don't know what that word means. Mandible is the word for those claws around your mouth. I know what mandibles means. What's a keys? The shiny things. There's a metal ring with some flat, jagged pieces of metal connected to it. You know what metal is? Well, I'm a sloppy eater, but there's nothing else stuck on my mandibles besides this shiny thing. So I think I can figure it out. You want this thing? What do you give me in return for it? 
this gun in my hand? No, I couldn't give you that. I don't know, I could give you my trench coat or my shoes or something. You want to molt your floppy exoskeleton and you think I'll trade for that? I don't have anything else. What do you want? Food. Do you have any pieces of dead animals or scraps dropped by giants? Do you know the directions to a fresh picnic basket? I'm partial to cinnamon rolls. I can bring you one. Give me the keys, I'll take them back to Castro, and I'll bring you a whole basket full of scraps and dead animals and cinnamon rolls. I'm not sure how long it'll take, though. Do you understand what time or debt means? I would owe you the food and bring it to you in an hour or two. Yes, I understand what time and debt means. Do you understand what patronizing and condescending means? How do you put up with this guy? I just met him. He's not that bad, except he keeps yelling about how he's on drugs or hypnotized or something. A jazz cigarette. I bet someone slipped me a jazz cigarette. How would they slip you one of those? You don't smoke. Somebody made you accidentally smoke a J? Thankfully, I don't have to put up with him. Hey, uh, ma'am, we can talk this out. I don't like to use my gun. Yes, you do. I mean, I prefer to solve situations without violence when possible. Why are you lying? I don't want to get eaten by a hippo with mandibles. You don't have to do this. I have to live up to my name. I am the antagonist. Don't worry, friend. You're saved. What's that? Get away! Five more ladybugs flying in to restrain the ant. Thank you. You jerks! Why are you helping this tiny, giant human? What happened to solidarity among bugs? We are not bugs, and neither are you. Technically, only members of the order Hemiptera are true bugs. Beetles and ants belong to the order Hymenoptera. Well, la dee da I'm not a pet ant, so I use the word bug the way normal people do. You see, Falk, ladybugs work together. It's probably overwhelming to find yourself shrunk down, lose your short-term memory, and discover a society of ladybugs who have such powerful bonds in their community. They're strong, loyal, true blue, even to new friends like you. Well, usually true red with black spots, but occasionally blue. Why didn't I see it sooner? I get it now. I'm not dreaming or drugged. Good. You've accepted what's happening. Come on, you can tell me. Did a ladybug write this episode? No. Well, that's what you would say. Anyway, we're stuck in it now, so the only way out is through. Let's see if we can move towards the final punchline and the closing theme music. Here are your keys, Mr. Ziljan. Thanks. And to prove that humans aren't all jerks, after I return to normal size, I'm still going to bring a picnic basket for the ants or whoever else wants it. That will be a feast for everyone. The flies and maggots and rats will appreciate your gift. Ladybugs even get along with rats? Hell no. Was that the final punchline? I don't think so. Can you ladies let me go now? You got your stupid shiny thing. Are ants always this angry? You'd be angry too if someone said your butt looked as big as a zeppelin. That's the one to end on. Cue the closing theme. Fly Away Home, episode 74 of This Gun in My Hand, was written by Rob Northrup, not by a ladybug. This episode and all others are available on YouTube with automatically generated closed captions of dialogue. Visit thisgunninmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books, such as Little Heist in the Big Woods and Other Revisionist Atrocities. You know, if you'd like, if you'd like to be a patron of This Gun in My Hand, uh, you don't even have to go to Patreon. What you can do is go to my website, buy a copy of my book every month, or, or every two months. You set the schedule however much you want, once a year. There you go. Who wrote this episode? This gun in my hand. <laughs>